Shar Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision LLC do not endorse or offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Hey, everybody, how are you? So, you know Sonny Margolis, he is a Pisces. He was born March 3rd. And um, I'm a Leo. I was born August 21st. And the reason that I'm talking about astrology signs is because today I have one of my favorite people on ever, just even oh. as my friend. He's just an amazing person. His name's Greg Tafuro. And he's going to help us understand some things about astrology because there was recently a, uh, a, a blue moon and, and an eclipse and it was a super moon, and we're going to talk all about that. And we're going to talk about your sign because we're going to go through all the signs. And we're going to talk about what's in store for 2018. I'm sorry we're a little late on this because um, we're a couple months into the new year, but that's okay. That's that's fine. Anyway, Greg, hi. Hello. Hi. That's fine. You know, it's really nice. Th this big <laughs> eclipse, this is in my mind when the year really began. This is the thing that's kind of like setting well you know it's saturn at the end of december and now this eclipse this is like the thing that's setting 2018 into motion okay what was the date of the eclipse it was february it was january 31st it was a super blue blood moon and what does that uh, mean so my astronomer friends will tell you it means so the super is uh it's when the sun so there's apogee and there's perigee so it's it's when the it's when the moon is the closest to the earth so it's the closest to the earth during uh, it was a couple of times in uh, once in December, a couple of times in January. Two full moons in a month is what you call a blue moon. And then the blood moon is because it was a lunar eclipse. So it turned the moon. Oh, look at that. Very sweet. Wow. So it turned the moon red. Good so it's, it's those things. The super blue blood moon. Uh, and then the lunar eclipse, <clears throat> uh, which, you know, that's that's for astrologers means something different than it means for astronomers. So. Wait, is a blue moon when there's two moons in one month? Two full moons in one month. So we actually had five Mondays in January. Uh, it was like the <laughs> longest month ever. So we had enough time to have two uh, full moons. Wow. And then I think there's not a full moon, though, in February, is there? Um, I don't know. You know what? I don't think I, there is. Yeah. I saw it on the news. I'm focusing primarily what you'll hear from me today is about the eclipses, about Saturn, about Uranus, about Jupiter, because we have this is like a year of big planetary shifts just in terms of where they've been for a couple of years now. And, uh, you know, the eclipse series, it's I can't even explain to you. This eclipse series has impacted my it, 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 it was in Virgo and Pisces for a bit. It's the mm -hmm. same thing that happened back like 2007 to 2009. It's right. been, you know, depending upon who it hits and where it hits, eclipses have, to me, the most profound effect in our lives. Okay, so tell us what they mean. Like I sent, oh, a t yeah. I, I sent like a tweet out saying, yeah. uh, embrace the energy of the the super blue moon and use it to use that energy to attain your goals or something. Right. Right. Can you, can you grab that energy and like put it I where mean, you want it? So, so, you know, this is what I like to say about eclipses. I don't know. I feel like eclipses kind of control our lives. I don't want to say like in a predestined way, but I feel like depending upon the track your life is going in at the time mm -hmm. of an eclipse, if it hits your chart, it's like <laughs> eclipses. We say, Every day of your life's a page in your life story, right? And right. a cliff that hits your chart actually is like you, your your life moves forward a couple of chapters or you're suddenly in another book. Uh, so you mean so like it, everything changes? A lot of it's per, like if it hit you, if you if this eclipse impacted you. Right. You would have felt it on December at the end of December right now or 
you'll feel it at the end of February. Uh, and you'll know. I mean, it'll be like, oh, look, there it is. But uh, wasn't my, there my, a correlation my, between the what? August eclipse and this eclipse? Yes. So the series of eclipses that's been going on has been in uh, Aquarius and Leo. So, you know, it's like unexpected change. If, if you maybe had an unexpected change in August, it kind of would play itself forward again with this eclipse that just happened because this eclipse was in Leo. And Aquarius right. and Leo are opposite signs. But it tends to be, when we have eclipses in those signs, it tends to be uh, universal sorts of things happening in terms of humanity and uh, also like our ego, like the sense of self. It would tend to be if you feel them. And, you know, you everybody would know if they feel them. I, I've been this one. And then the weird thing about this eclipse is it really does. It goes back to 2007, 2009. So... If you can think back to what was going on in your life 2007 to 2009 and how does it kind of relate to the eclipses that have been going on since the summer and now, you'd kind of be like, oh, okay, look at that. That's interesting. So, I don't know. You tell me. Well, okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, well, my birthday was August 21st. I mean, personally. Yeah. Yeah. And, tell me, well, yeah I want to hear from you. What What's going on in your well, life right on now? on February 1st, yeah. Yeah. like. All these doors opened up for me, crazy, right. positive doors. Like right after the eclipse? Yes. Did you have anybody, any? In, so, so, because there's a lunar eclipse, a lot of the times it signifies some sort of female leaving our existence, like leaving our lives, or um, I can't even explain it other than like it's more of a receptive energy. We, we, we could call them eclipses because it's like people get eclipsed out of our lives. Uh, at the time really? of a lunar eclipse, solar eclipses are new beginnings. So in your own life in particular, any female less present, and it could be they disappeared last month, it could be now, it could be next month. I got it. And if, it, if not, then it might not be. I mean, it might I got to think it, about that. It doesn't hit everybody exactly the same I know, way. I got to ask Nikki. Nikki, text me if that's true, because I don't. I, and that's, that's really like more so I'm talking about like this eclipse. It would impact Aquarians and Leos the most dramatically in that fashion. With other signs, it impacts them differently. Uh huh. So, uh, like, if I we were going to talk see. about, if I we were going to talk about Pisces, Pisces and Virgos, it might have more to do with like uh, work and health, mm -hmm. uh, or like maybe some sort of, uh, you know, psychological barriers that we've been grappling with. It's right. Kind of, eclipses like release that sort of energy so that you kind of like face it and deal with it. Uh, well, you said at the end of the month something could happen. So could happen, could still happen at the end of February. So if it didn't happen at the end of January, it didn't happen at the end of December. You feel eclipses. You feel the energy of an eclipse. Well, plus you know what? I did find month. out that somebody just two days ago. I found out that somebody who worked for me died. All right. I mean, that to me would be in that what a female. A female. It was, it was a female. Okay. So then and that I had me, no idea she had died. All right. So there you go. So it came. So it became a part of your existence. Yeah, I mean, I felt really bad. It, right. So there you go. You know, that person it was eclipsed out of your life. Right. That's that's what eclipses. They they tend when if they hit you and they're you know right now it was a Leo eclipse. So a Leo Leos uh, uh -huh. in particular is at Leo eleven degrees. So like a Leo's like more so like in the first ten days of Leo, uh, the, the actual like. 11th day of Leo would felt it the most. So what is that? That's, uh, you know, uh, beginning of August. What's your birthday? 21. You're actually towards the end of Leo. I was I mean, on the still, eclipse. You were on last, you were on the so, the solar eclipse last yeah. year. Right. That was, that was, what happened to you then? Like what was, there was actually a new beginning associated with that solar eclipse when it hit you. So what was, what was the new beginning in your life? Did oh, you just move? there'd been some business, new doors whatever. were new doors were opening and now okay. they're starting they're opening. So they're progressing. This is the progression yeah. in terms of what's happening. Yeah. yeah. And then I want you to relate it. Take now now let's go back in time. But, how did what's going on now? Had it around the years let me just make sure I want to make sure. Da, da, da. It was like 2017 to the beginning of 2019 is when there was no, that's actually what's that's happening right now. It was uh, 2008 to 2009, the Eclipse series in Aquarius and Leo. Uh -huh. Anything there in terms of similarities to what's happening right now? You know, it is. I, I kind of want to talk about it, but it is. 
So for you, you feel you you get what I'm talking about. Yeah, I want it is. Yeah, anyone that's watching this, this is what you need to do. You always need to look at the series of eclipses, the signs it's in, so, and then really. So back wait, to a you said 2006, 2007, right? It, it's it, 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 no, but it's true. It's the same energy, the same kind of stuff. Okay, it's, it's like the, the series of eclipses is in the same signs, like every nine years. That's Kinda crazy. Like, that's like really patterns. that's really look happening. In our lives, like every nine years, and then you know, like all right, so yeah, in my in my life. Yeah, I, I totally see it. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this series of eclipses for me is always dramatic in terms of uh, just like a big life experience for me. Right. It's like, oh, it's defining, like really defining of what's going on in my life. Yeah. That's what the series of eclipses does. Wow. But I want to I want to hear Aquarius. I'm on the cusp of Aquarius and Pisces. So. Oh, so Aquarius, that's a big deal for you. That's right. For me, it's a big deal. I mean, my wife's a Leo, so it's like for us, it's like yeah, it's dramatic. But it's uh, positive, right? I mean, <laughs> is it? You know, at the beginning of the series of eclipses wasn't so positive. I'd say, like in the grand scheme of, I always, we, we, you and I always have this conversation. I always look at life is meant to taught us things, and it's right. meant to, uh, it's meant to cause us to have some sort of evolution. And uh, yeah, I mean, is it ultimately positive? Yes. In the moment that you're experiencing these things, right? Is it positive? I don't know that. I don't know that we're always like as aware of the grand picture of things until some time has passed. I, yeah. I would love to hear from uh, our Shar visionaries to, uh, of if, what happened through this eclipse with them. I, I want to hear. If they so want to tweet us or email. Leos, uh, like around like, um, so say like the, the Leos that would be most impacted would be at the uh, beginning of uh, August. The beginning so of August. I, I, I want to hear the beginning okay. of August. They're okay. the ones that have okay. been most impacted by this eclipse. And, I, and they should have felt something. Well, you know what? Like, my my best friend is the beginning of August. And, yeah, and what's, what's their, happening? Their cat <laughs> got sick. Their cat is sick. Okay. And, and, and uh, I mean, he really loves his cat. And I mean, it, it just like in, in in the days surrounding this lunar eclipse. Yeah, in the in in the veterinarian right now. A female cat? No, he's a neutered male cat, though. Oh well, I mean, astrologically, we might be able to say that's the yeah. same thing. But I don't know. You know, there might be other things going on with him as well. I don't know. Right. But yeah. um, wow. Okay, so what what do you feel? Yeah. For this next year. For in terms of like the world in general, what the world? I don't want to just say the U.S. because we have a lot of listeners from out of the country. So all over the world, sure. Oh, all, all over so, the world. So you know, Saturn went into Capricorn at the end of December, and it's the natural placement of Saturn. So Saturn's considered a heavy planet astrologically. It's the teacher planet. It's the thing from which we learn the most. So it being in Capricorn, which is really the sign represented by you know the elderly statesman, uh, the the adult, the 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 grown up you know disciplinarian teacher. So Saturn's in its natural placement. So really, over like the next couple of years that Saturn's in Capricorn, uh, we're all going to kind of be dealing with. I mean, you know, on some level, Amer America, let's say America right now, some people around the world are probably like, oh, my God, it's so juvenile. What's going on with America in terms of like, you know, presidency and stuff like that. The next couple of years, there's going to be like just a more of a maturity in terms of the world uh, dealing with things that it's created in terms of its expansion. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's there's like just there's like a growing up. I don't want to say come home to Jesus idea, but it's kind of like <laughs> everything that like everything we've shown uh, kind of now the foundation of what ha what has really been laid down for the world. Uh, the next two years are, you know, they're they're challenging. It's like they're challenging. But from af from them, we could potentially really mature like. Uh, OK. Become like just wiser, wiser experiences associated with everybody in general, a growing up, uh, recognizing the impact that everything has upon everything else mm -hmm. uh, and a very like cause and effect. There's going to be like I think just things are clearer with Saturn and Capricorn. That's that's my understanding. What? Uh, what it'll mean for us. Yeah. You know, I probably should have asked you to look at North Korea. But you probably would have well, to really do that chart to you know, know. Well, the only thing that I know about North Korea is uh, Kim Jong, 
you know what? It was Kim Jong. I haven't looked at Kim Jong Un's chart. Uh, yeah, I should have asked. My my bad. What now, is he? Is he an Aquarius? I'm trying to remember what his sign is. Uh, because then I could tell you what's. Oh, you I mean, know what? Tony's gonna find out because Tony's. Find out. Oh yeah, find out the leader's sign, and that'll dictate. Tony's our. What about our president? What sign is he? He is a Gemini. He's a Leo rising, which is oh. why you know a Gemini. A lot of they're two sides. He's back whole, and forth and back and forth. He's back and forth, and he's also look at how the way we view him in America. There are people that love him, and there are people that can't stand him. He has. He, he actually exists with the duality. He's also a Leo rising. What's your rising sign, Char? Uh, Libra. So you're all right. So that you're very, you're like you're, people. I come off. Don't people come off as what their rising sign is? Exactly. It's also it's 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 the filter through which your sun sign is channeled. So, so you're a balanced. Leo Libra rising. So very, you know, you read people. I mean, like you're very adaptive to people. You're very much able to like sense the energy balance with people. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's very charming. Oh, uh, thank you. Attractive. Like, you know, you, 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 beauty is important to you just in terms of presentation. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, but with Trump, yeah. he's a legal rising. So think about. So he let, so he comes Think about off. a Gemini personality. Think about so like Gemini, you say it's the twins. Right. Now take them and now make them Leo. It's like a Gemini. Oh, so like my goodness. We see like the twins in like the oh grand scale. So that that's that's why uh, that's why they're real with him. There's like a duality, like right, like which I don't know that we as a country have ever experienced. I don't think so. What um, did you get? Right? Kim Jong? OK, January 8th, 1983, January so he, 8th, 1983. Oh, so, so, he, so he's a Capricorn. Uh, so, all right. So, you know what? He's really going to be challenged over the next couple of years. And either he's it's, so when Saturn's in your sign, so right. Saturn's in Capricorn, it means that the things that you've built substantively will actually last and endure, and things that are built on sand go away. So, if his leadership uh, is true, you know, to his people, you know, he'll be able to solidify that hold on them. Right. And if it's not, it will fall away. Uh, but it's certainly going to be tested. I mean, uh, January 8th. So he's towards the middle of the sign. Uh, you know, I don't know. That's kind of scary to me now that I think about it. It could be like towards the end of the year uh, into the beginning of next year. Yeah. A real challenge with him. I mean, once Saturn hits your sun sign with a direct hit, uh, it's, it's a profound weight and a profound heaviness on you. So for him being the leader of a country, it would indicate to me that at some point, and a lot of Capricorns are going to be feeling this over the next year, like those at the beginning of the sign and those into uh, uh, the beginning of January. Uh, you might feel like there's more of a heaviness, a weight. Uh, you might feel a little bit more stifled. Uh, so he may feel those things too, mm -hmm. more towards the end of the year. Uh, you know, I hope it's not, listen, let him be stifled in the way that like his people become empowered, but like let him not be stifled in the way that we have a war there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, right. Uh, and, and we, in the whole world, uh, uh, and, and I, I don't know, I, I don't like talking. I, I hope that it's not the heaviness of, something terrible happening to the country right uh but i wouldn't be surprised if you mean they're, they're, wait which country north korea North korea okay you know he's uh he's definitely due for a major test more towards the end of the year personally how that will impact the country remains to be seen but without a doubt when saturn hits him uh i mean we've been seeing the buildup. we've been seeing the buildup now over the past year Wait until the end of this year. I would not be surprised if, uh, I mean, listen, I, 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 you know what's my problem with doing astrology? And this is why, Char, I only do it for you and I try not to do it too much. I know. I do believe that some of what you put out there I know. has, it has you an impact. You don't want to put it out there, but okay, so you told us enough. I'm not going to like okay. pigeonhole right. you into, you know, uh, because people create most of their destiny by choices yes, that they make, right? Yes. True. But, I do believe but that. you know, I, I guess just sometimes there's more of a leaning towards certain energies than others. So right. yeah. let's just be positive yeah. and put a white light around our the world we and all the people. Around, put a white light around our world and positive people in our world. And yeah. 
that. And because I uh, believe that prayer is important, and I believe that if... A million percent, I agree with I, you. I feel like if every important. single person took one problem at a time and yeah. prayed prayed about it, yeah, and then I'm thinking of the lady who helped raise me, Catherine, she used to say, pray on it, pray on it. If, if everybody prayed about I, one thing at a time, and then everybody put their mind towards fixing, fixing each problem at a time, yeah. There would be, we would really be able to heal the planet. And for, but you know what the problem is? We have so many people on this planet that pray for opposite things. And, you know, sometimes don't, I, I, I do think that oh, I'm an Aquarius to the last degree. So I do believe in a universal goodness. Right. Uh, and a universal humanitarian quality to people that like most people, I'm not going to say it's everybody, mm -hmm. but that most people have the desire to help others uh so uh, yeah i mean if you pray towards those things right uh, i think it's really important that, for important. everybody to do that i mean really one day i would love to get everybody to just pray on one thing if we could get the well, whole world why isn't to do there a that? national prayer day right why don't we have something like that I, in the world that like everybody folk because you know listen even scientific studies you could call it a placebo effect whatever it is there, there's definitely an impact when they, when they examine the, the effect of prayer uh, in terms of its ability to accomplish things when groups of people do it. Why isn't there like some universal we, peace day we, that we all right. pray? At we would same we would need enough. some great you know? leader who everybody believes in and trusts. Right. Who's that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean. Right. People love no, Ellen Oprah. DeGeneres. The, every, Oprah, Oprah needs to I was to thinking, like, people love prayer. Oprah. People like, love Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres, yeah, funny people. Yeah, you know. You know, but, you know, because, but it, you can't be the president because, like you said, people either love him or hate him. Right. And, and I think that's just the way our, I think our country, so our country is was born, as far as I know, if you looked at a certain chart astrologically, July 4th, 1776, it was born a Sagittarius rising. So if oh. you actually look, and so, you know, Sagittarius is a sign of duality and it indicates, you know, half man, half ass, right? <laughs> uh, it's also the archer that shoots his arrow and tries to bring hope and peace to the world, right. thinking the most enlightened, but it's not always the most enlightened. It's uh, There's the dual nature of America in terms of its perception well, to the world. You know, energetically, though, I yeah. always believe that the world runs like a battery. There's always uh -huh. a positive and negative charge. 100%. You can't totally have one without agree. the yeah. other. Yeah, it's like a wave. It's like I always say it goes like this. Yeah. 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 OK, and, so and, and prayer, now, I hope, like takes that in an up direction as opposed to in a down direction. OK, you know? so now. OK, so why don't we. Okay, can we talk about different signs? Do it, do it, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you how like the major transits will be impacting different signs. Yeah, right? let's do that because yeah. I want everybody to to get something out of this besides. Right, rather than just you and me talking, just, like just me getting uh -huh. read all the time, which I love. Okay, so where where do we start? What's the first sign? Is that Aries? Well, I mean, start with Aries, right? Aries. So if, look, leave, leave, leave that chart up. I'll, I'll talk about it. Okay. You see Aries is on the left side, right over there? Yeah. Okay, it's right right on the left. So Aries like on the horizon. So Saturn would be in Capricorn at the top of the chart, right? So mm -hmm. Saturn for Aries indicates that there's going to be uh, things that you've been working towards and accomplishing in terms of your career are now actually, there's going to be the culmination of uh, those things either coming to fruition or uh, not. So it's like uh, if you worked hard to get where you are, the next two years you're really going to reap uh, the accomplishments. That's a you're good thing then for Aries if they That's if they've great, worked great. at it. Hundred uh, percent. So then we move to the next sign. If we move to Taurus, Taurus. Uh, so it would fall in the uh, uh, score. So it would fall in the second. It would fall in the. Uh, uh, put that put that back up. I mean, I have to, I, 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 you know what it is. I'm doing all this geometry in my head. So if, if we look at Taurus, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, nine, ten, ten, uh, let me, let me, let me, my, my brain's not, not functioning as well as I want it to. So Taurus, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, all right. So with Taurians, it would be more about, um, uh, more about, uh, 
I'm trying to I, I, I'm trying I'm trying to confusing myself. It's either it's more about travel and education and uh, uh, accomplishing things mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, spirituality. Okay. Uh, those are the things that might suddenly be tested for you uh, as opposed to your career. It would be like more like higher education right. things more challenging or uh, um, your spirituality. Maybe it's suddenly you have a crisis of faith uh, for the next couple of years. You're like, you know, has, have I been forsaken? Uh, uh huh. Those are the types of things that Taurians would be more likely to deal with with Saturn's placement. Um. Yeah. Okay, then, that's good. Wait, to, that's good just, to know. So they're going more into a spiritual direction. More, yes. Actually, let me go. I want to go back to Aries for a second. So Uranus has been has been in Aries for the past seven years. So for Aries, there might have been more unexpected things going in their life. Uh, that you know, life went in different directions that they might not have anticipated. Uh. It's about to enter their uh, second house because uh, it's going into Taurus. Right. And uh, there could be more. And this is on a world level. There's going to be like more financial changes unexpectedly, not necessarily good. We can't really predict that what Uranian energy does, whether it's positive or negative. Wait, but wait, wait, Aries, wait, wait, just for Aries or for the world? That's for the world, but for Aries more so uh, because it's going to be in their second house. So income. Uh, real estate matters. Uh, when does it enter? It enters Taurus on, in May. So around May, uh, and then it's going to be there for about seven years. Around May, uh, Aries might start seeing, uh, you know, income matters. What if your moon's matter. in Aries? What if the moon is in Aries? What if somebody's moon is in Aries? <laughs> so, well, if they're, is that where your moon is? Yes. I'm, I hate to be doing this, but we are, just real quick. I mean, so you would have had, so you, you've dealt with anything unexpected uh, in terms of really the past seven years. It depends on where it is in Aries. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, you know, you would have dealt with emotion. I don't want to say like emotional outbursts unexpectedly. You know this more than me, like in terms of your personal life, where there are uh, uh, women who are unexpectedly being challenging or doing unexpected things to you over the past seven years? Was it mm -hmm. having an emotional impact on you more so than other times in your life? I don't know. Well, you, you, you know yeah. That. Okay. I don't want to go into it, but I'll tell you when we're on the phone yeah. another time. Okay. Now we're, but, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. Well, say it, everything I say is true. It doesn't always have to be right. No, be, somebody, you know. somebody close to me was ill, but now they're okay. And it's a female. Okay. okay, okay. So, Okay, so thank God they're okay. Okay, yeah. so okay, so there was Aries and there was Taurus. Then there was oh, Gemini. So I just, let me just in my head, Gemini, Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Okay, so it's okay. So it falls in the eighth house. So eighth house uh, is where Capricorn would be. So in terms of you know they're going to be dealing uh, potentially Gemini's in general more learning experiences potentially associated with sex uh, with you know loved ones. There could be um, uh, difficulties for the next two years associated with inheritance issues, with um, uh, matters of life and death. I can't really explain it other than. Um, wow, that's an extreme. It is an extreme. Yeah. And this I mean, is for Geminis. Well, wait, but our president's in a Gemini. Oh, I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, issues of inheritance in his own family, potentially issues, life and death. He Life and death or money issues. Wow. Okay. But money from other people, not his money. It would be money from other people. Oh, money that from would other people. Uh, but yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, the more we talk about it, it's like the more, you know, this is like, well, I guess where my intuition comes into astrology, talking about uh, North Korea and Trump's chart. I mean, maybe there are going to be big learning lessons associated with that. I mean, I, there, you, you know, know what's what? weird? It's like, this is where this is where I feel like you make me start having to be like psychic. But there's part of me that's kind of <laughs> like I don't know. We'll see what happens with North. Well, Korea. no, you're very intuitive, and that's one of the reasons that I I love talking to you because you you understand astrology, and I I'm in awe of people who really know how to do astrology because it's just I, weird for me because as I'm doing it, it's like <laughs> I just start having thoughts, and I know yeah, that yeah, but based that's on your intuition. I know. I just don't always like when they're not positive. That's okay, of, but it's like but it. the reason that you get the thoughts is to help yeah. prevent problems. You know, right. you, yeah. if you know something's ahead, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. That's true. That's very true. Although sometimes 
Ignorance is bliss. That's true. That's mm-hmm. true. Okay, so that's Gemini. Gemini's life and death, bigger li- inheritance issues, money coming from other places. So okay, money it's, coming it's, from other places. It's like a will. So it's like say somebody passes away in a Gemini's life. Right. There might be challenges associated with the will of that person okay. and the way that money gets distributed. It's things like that for Gemini. Or sexual matters for Gemini. So potentially uh, a Gemini is um you know, having difficulty in, in those areas like, or, you know, like prostate to, issues or something. It could, be, it could be that or maybe they're trying to conceive and it becomes challenging or they do conceive and the pregnancy isn't the easiest. Right. Right. Ooh, like, that's like, fascinating. There's okay. Challenge associated with so sex after Gemini is after Gemini is cancer, right? Right. So cancer. All right. So cancers would tend to be have challenges most associated with partnerships. Uh, with business partnerships and personal relationships. Uh, they tend to, it could either be their partner having those challenges uh, or uh, uh, them having difficulty in terms of their partnership and how they're managing to, like, if if there are difficulties for a cancer in their partnership, they'll come to light. And if the partnership's meant to be, it'll last. And if it's not, it tends to, uh, it tends to fall away. You know who's I mean, a cancer? Oh, Prince Harry. So, all right. So there he is. And, and he's at, and Megan he's is a Leo his relationship. What's, Me- her, what's her Megan's sign? a Leo. So she's a Leo and the eclipses. I'm acting happening. like I know them. You probably do know. Them. No, Have I don't. Ever been into the <laughs> royal family. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's interesting. So he's actually solidifying his relationship with her. That's great. It's actually substantive and it's going to have, you know, it's going to grow. Uh but for you know, people will you know Saturn. I'm telling you, it's like it, where it lands in your chart is the thing that's being. It's the strongest lesson that you're learning in your life during that time, that two year time period. It's uh, fascinating. So like for him, it's really like this two year time period. We see it is about partnerships and relationships. Right. Solidifying it. Um, that's good because if he was already in a relationship and it was suddenly going through uh, his seventh house, I'd be a little bit more concerned in the sense that I'd be like, huh, is it going to survive this transit? If it is great, that means it's strong. If it doesn't, then it's not meant to be. I think every relationship takes compromise and work. Totally. Yeah. And I mean, I'm a Leo and I've had a couple boyfriends that were cancers and it didn't work out, but that doesn't mean they won't work out. But Somebody so who told led me the, who led the relationship? You who know, what? Who, who was le- in those relationships? Were you the leader or were you the follower? Like what was when what was, was the le- thing that didn't work well, in the leader, relationship? Le- leader, leader. You, you you tend to be the leader, and what happens? Because I'd say what would happen if I had to predict the way that a relationship for you and a cancer would play out. I'd say that the cancer, if at any point got too uh, too sensitive to your ability to you have a strong personality and you know a strong sense of self if at any but, point there was a sensitivity there cancer shut down they kind of like closed well, themselves somebody off. told me that if if a water sign is with a fire sign the water can put out the fire but i don't know i think it all it's general that's a generalization or or, or it depends on the, it depends on the mix or the the fire they say kind of creates a mist out of the water sign. Oh, that makes good sense. I like that analogy you go better. One way or the other, it depends on the dynamic of the relationship. But like I'll say, like it, it, cancers, my experience with them and what I know them to be in general is they're very sensitive. They don't always appear to be very sensitive because uh, sometimes they have like sharp wits. Uh, Tony's uh, a cancer. No, I'm a sad. Yeah. Oh no, you're but sad. Will. I'm sorry. Will. Will's a cancer. Oh, his boyfriend's a cancer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sharp, what sensitive and, you know, they, they do. If you if you if you hurt their feelings, they do withdraw. And that they put makes a sense. Down, and it's hard to break that down. You kind of need to. Do you know, cancers uh, get along with Sagittarius? <laughs> Tony. Cancer and Sagittarius. Tony's uh, going to kill me. I mean, it's not I, I'll say it's not like uh, uh, it's not like a. Um, uh, it's not like I'd say it's like, oh, they're the easiest relationship. No, it's uh, not they, easy. They both bring different things to the table. <laughs> Can he hear uh, They Can probably he... both have a sense of humor that may be similar. Uh, but, uh, you know, Sagittarians are more of a fiery, uh, sociable, 
cancer need could to be that and like being on stage probably a little bit more than Sagittarius but do need to like withdraw and recharge in a home they need to have a secure home base if they don't have a secure mm-hmm. home that's base that's so tony whereas mm-hmm. a Sagittarius can kind of oh that was man, cancer that, that, wait who cancer. needs a home base Cancer needs the home base. Oh, he cancer. Does too. He does. Too. Oh, he does? Yeah. He always says, oh, you I, know need, what? He that, always says I need my space. I need my and, space. And, I need my yes, space. Yes. Yeah. And Sagittarius would be more like, you know, they like, they're sociable people. They like going out there. They like being out there. They're more, they're, they're more like able to just gel I with can, people. But... I'm not saying cancers can't. It's, it's not that cancers can't. It's just that, uh, I think when cancers do, it's like they like being like a little bit on the stage. They're, they have a little bit similarity like a Leo there. Uh, but they do need to withdraw and recharge, and that needs to be a solid, stable home. Uh, and that's they need a, to, that's that good. That sounds more like me, though. That sounds like him, but you know that does sound like Tony. But maybe he's got cancer. Do you have cancer anywhere else? I have no idea. My mom's a cancer. <laughs> His mom's a cancer. Okay, you have a close so relationship with your mom, right? Yeah, What'd you say close relationship with your mom. Yes. He calls her so every that's... single day. All right, so there you go. Every what, you're single the day. You're the cancer. He... So two cancers. But Tony's an old soul and one of the dearest, most sensitive, kindest people I know. Right. So I mean, yeah. That's why you know one another and associate. It's, it's, those are the types of people to associate with. Yeah, I feel very blessed to be Aww. able to work with you, Tony. I never thank him enough for helping me with Char Vision. Aww, thank you welcome. so much. It's my you doing, there you go, right now. So maybe that's an, maybe that's another effect of the eclipse. <laughs> Tony's going to realize how much you appreciate him. It's true. <laughs> it's so true. Okay, so... Cancer, then Leo. What's going on? So Leo. So Leo, of course. Is... So, um, all right. So Saturn would be in the sixth house. So that's actually health matters may come more into focus. Um, the balance of your work with your health. So it's like if, uh, you know, you're working too much, you may suddenly find your health goes out of whack more so the next couple of years than usual. Uh, work. Uh, may suddenly feel more daunting. It actually may drain your health because uh, work and health really have they're very they're very connected. Uh, so, so all yeah. Leos have to be careful of their work and their and draining in their health. Yeah, it's like almost like you have to. This is the next two years to find the balance point of those two things. If you work too hard, you're going to impact your health in a negative way. Uh, yeah. I mean, That's exactly great. what my astrologer that I had, I, I cheated on you. I had it for my <laughs> chart. <on. laughs> and that's exactly what she said. That's crazy. That's okay. Pardon? That's the truth. I mean, you really do. You have to pay attention. I'll say that, that when that's been out of whack for me, uh, yeah, you, you see the impact so immediately. So all Leos need to have more balance and don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Yeah. Don't overdo it, especially with this flu thing going around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And for the next like two, two some years, just be on top of, uh, be on top of health matters. Yeah. And, you know, okay. What about Virgo? Go ahead. Keep going. What? Yeah. Virgo. I suppose. Did I interrupt you? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Okay. No, we, 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 All right. So fifth house. So, I mean, Challenges potentially associated with romance, um, with love, with children. Um, that's 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 the thing. The next two years are those things. You, you, the, joy, joy may be more challenging in general um, for Virgos. Yeah, because it would it would be heavier, like th- ha- potentially heavier things associated with children, with. Uh, um, Romance, romance would take on more of a stoic sensibility. Um, potentially, and this, I'm just, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm remembering the right things. It could be pets too. I know that sounds so whack. Pets? I think so. I'm pretty really? sure that just rules pets. Uh, so yeah, just like more challenges associated with that over the next. It's really like a couple of year transit Saturn in that house. And okay, in- then okay, and then Virgo. Then there's um, Libra. Libra. Leap, so it's the fourth house. So things associated with your actual home, the foundations of your home, your parents, challenges potentially associated there. Uh, I believe more so the mother than the father. Um, uh, the actual, your house, the actual house you have built and that you live in, there could be things associated, could be changes in your home. Changes. Uh, that you actually move. 
and build a new foundation from one place to another. Wow. It's also on some level for Libras, it's in, this actually chart would be impacting you as well. There might be more of like a feeling of like an energy depletion, like an energy low that uh, you feel like uh, you're, you're more tired than usual. Uh, I don't want to say it's like a two year transit. You have to realize it's like when it really hits the bottom of your chart. So depending on where, where it is. And then mm -hmm. what happens is Saturn right now is going to be in the fourth house, which is the bottom of a person's charts. That indicates like an energetic sapping of sorts. But right. the good news is right after that happens, it starts moving up in the chart. So it's like almost like if you feel that, know that this too shall pass. But yeah, those things associated with home and house and parents. Uh, there's more challenges. And maybe moving or changing their home. Maybe moving or changing their home. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then after Libra is Scorpio. Scorpio. So Scorpio. Okay. So I mean, you know, challenges would be in the third house. That's like uh, siblings potentially. You may suddenly find you're having to. Uh, maybe your siblings are having difficulty or you're having difficulty with your siblings or you're helping your siblings through a difficulty or uh, you're suddenly traveling shorter distances uh, f uh, more often than you may have. Or there's difficulty associated with shorter. Uh, it's like you have your house here. You're going on a vacation uh, two hours away. And there's, there's just difficulties with shorter distances in your life. Uh, siblings. Uh, th those are the bigger challenges. Uh, okay, siblings. Yeah. I I know I I know Scorpio, and I think they're having issues with their siblings. So that's I or that their makes... sibling might be having the issue. It's, yeah, you know, it could be one or the other. Interesting. Very. Yeah. In is it just sibling, or could it be like nieces, nephews? You know, I my I need to probably check on my astrology, read some more texts, and be more. It might be. I honestly, I don't know where nieces okay. and nephews are, are are dictated in the chart, but I know the third house primarily rules siblings, your relationships with siblings, and just shorter distances. It tends to be like things closer to your home. So like that makes things sense. Closer to your home, there might be like I don't want to say like say you live in California. Uh, there might be earthquakes closer. It's like just events. World events tend to the impact would be closer to you. I can't, that, that's just. That's, I feel there's going to be an earthquake to you. Um, Quick, I, answer, no, I mean, intuition. What, what, what would my answer say? As you said it, I mean, like, my mind's like, yes. Okay. But I, don't, I don't like saying that stuff because who needs I know, but I, but you got to be prepared. My friend I gave know, me a prepared a kit. Yeah. Okay, so after that is Sagittarius, Sagittarius. Tony. Ray, Tony. Woo! Woo All right. All right. Well, so, okay. So, uh, Sagittarius, second house. So, this is potentially uh, earned income is a uh, is is where the challenge is, and uh, could be bringing more money in, the ability to make more money. Yes. Um, we were just talking about that. Yeah, I mean, so there's the ability to make more money. So it's like things, but there's also challenges associated with money and the money you make. Uh, and also there's challenges associated with buying and selling property uh, and just finances in general. So, uh, you know, this would be a time. So say you're, say you're a Sagittarius and decide to invest in the stock market. This could be a time where you either make a lot. And this sounds, I hate this. This sounds so broad as I'm saying it. I don't want to say it could be throwing money away or it could be like, wow, if I'm like don't really building it. a solid foundation and it's great. Uh, but that's, that's kind of, that's really what it is. It's like, and, and, and you know, soon enough, it's like when these, when you're, when you're dealing with these things, it's like, as I'm saying it to you, you kind of know, so if you say you're investing your money or Sagittarius, you'd know like, uh Oh, uh, <laughs> it's difficulty. It's causing difficulty in my life. If that's the case, that's kind of the lesson that you're going to be learning through, or it's oh, like, Oh, I'm suddenly making more money. Uh, great. But uh, now what am I supposed to do with it? And uh, life suddenly has more expenses. Everything has everything has the two sides to it. So Right. Okay. So after Sagittarius is Capricorn. Yeah, yeah. So Capricorns, yeah. I mean, they're, they're the ones that are most challenged in terms of sense of self, in terms of ego, in terms of structure of their lives, in terms of does my life have the direction I want it to be moving in? And, uh, and you I talked growing? about it earlier that Saturn's yeah. in Capricorn. So right. if people have been very proactive and 
then they're going to be doing great. They're, they're going to be growing great. more into themselves and doing great. If they yeah. haven't been, then they're going to find life is more challenging for the next couple of years. Wow. Like, and, and then and after like a heaviness. Right. You know? We talked about I mean, that earlier. And then so Capricorn and then Aquarius. And then Aquarius. So uh, that's you. That, it's me. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I hope this isn't the case, but, you know, there could be uh, potentially uh, more visits to the doctor, more uh -oh. psychological. Or, or, or there's also and this I actually feel like I'm experiencing more some like psychological underpinnings that like don't necessarily manifest themselves in your life consciously. They're more like subconscious ideas suddenly becoming more brought to the surface that you kind of like deal with those psychological barriers that you may right. have placed on yourself. It's kind of like working through those things and uh, growing from them or they become your undoing. It's one or the other. I'm going to say they're more positive and you kind of get through like psychological barriers. There's there's the potential that's to a good break thing. through psychological barriers more that, so in the next two years for Aquarians than in general. That's a good thing. I think so. Is that that are, is that the end? Ten minutes. Huh? No, no, no. Do it. Oh, it's it. That's yeah. it. We went through the. Got them all. <laughs> Tony's giving <laughs> me signs like... of how many minutes we have. We went like he goes like this three minutes. So and that's what I like. I yeah. said, "Is that it?" <laughs> Meaning is that Aquarius. We, we only talked about Saturn. I didn't even talk about Uranus. We talked a little bit about Uranus impacting Aries and Taurus. We, okay, we, but we, talk, talk. What you talked about Saturn? I, I, yeah, I mean Uranus is moving into Taurus. So then you you have to understand how that's going to impact every sign. So Taurians may suddenly have more unexpected, the next seven years for Taurians might have like unexpected changes in their definition of self. Really? Uh, yeah, I mean, more so, more so than times past. When, when Uranus goes through your sign, it goes through each sign every seven years and it, do, it pretty much hits each of our signs once in a lifetime. Wow. Uh, if you actually, you know, it was, it was in Aries for the, these past seven years and then before that it was in Pisces. Uh, and I will say that uh, if you look like 14 years to about eight years, it was like eight to 14 years ago, uh, that's really for me the, the the moments in time that my life changed in unexpected ways I couldn't have anticipated. Uh, and then Aries kind of just went through that, and now Taurians are going to be going through it more than other signs. Uh, so Taurians, I guess, a, a little bit, a little bit, uh, uh, and this starts in May, so it hasn't hit yet. Uh, Aries are kind of reaching the end of the unexpected thing. Okay, so in uh, May, what happens? Uranus, what? Uranus is moving into Taurus, and Taurians for like the next seven years. You know, it's, it's so. It's, is that it's, difficult? It's not difficult necessarily. It's unexpected. There's more unexpected. Unexpected things. Thing. Yeah. I mean, wow. like the next seven years, <clears throat> if they look in their total life picture, they'll be able to look at that seven year time period and say, you know what? I really can say that life dramatically this happened and I wasn't expecting it, it came out of the blue. And Aries should be able to say that for the past seven years. Uh, yeah. So, Greg, I mean, how can people get a hold? What? Good. Say that I, again? I, I wish there was an Aries that was listening and said, what in the past seven years could you say was the dramatic change? Right. Uh, but, uh, okay, so how can people get a hold of you? Is his... Uh, oh, I'm so you... difficult to get. I'm, I, 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 uh, it's, uh, they could email me. They could email my, my assistant. Okay, but what's on... Bar.com. But like I don't do this all the time. Wait, I don't wait, do wait. it. I know you don't do it all the time, and I and I'm so grateful to you because I twist your arm, and you always do this for me because I just love, because love, I mean, love talking and, to and you. I love doing it. And you know what it is? It's like I I, I speak so much off the top of my head. It's like and, I didn't prepare much. For but this you're so like intuitive. I'm, you're that's what yeah. I love about you. You right. and and your yeah. ego's not in the way, and it's not about making money. It's just that you have a love of astrology, and your right, dad's an astrologer. <gasps> Oh my God! Will your dad come on with you next time? I, I, I don't know. My dad gets shy suddenly, but you, but you like my my dad's the best. And what I, sign I, is he? He's an Aries. So okay. Yeah, I mean, you look at my dad's life the past seven years. I, dramatically different than it was before. Okay, that so even. say you're. What's underneath? I can't see his website. The astrology. Uh, astrology. astrology spot. Spot. That's right. Just go there. Go okay, there. Okay. Okay, but okay. people are hearing this and can't see it. So what is it? Some but people are only hearing audio. Spot. They, they could go there, and they could they'll they could find Say me, and, and they could track me down. Astrology what? The astrologyspot.com. The astrologyspot.com.
But I mean, I just want to apologize to anybody. If you don't hear from me, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because okay, I know. I, I, you know what? Okay, so, okay, full disclosure. Greg, like, has this big job at Good Morning America. He's a producer. Yes, but I have twist is. I twist his arm to come on Charvision because I really, truly believe that you are pure and honest and 100%. good. 100%. And, that, and that's it. It's like, that, yeah. I and mean, it's so I, much I, fun. And I yeah. love you. And thank you so you much. Too. And I, next, hope I, I hope I gave enough information you're that people amazing. can something from it as opposed to just being – I'd rather it not be so general. But the thing is, fo- listen to the things I said and just in terms of your the, 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 the challenges in terms of each of the signs. Okay. Pay attention over the next two years. Like see if – Oh, that is the th- the more conscious we sometimes are of these things, the more we're able to like when when we feel that challenge and feel that difficulty, the more right. likely to be like, what am I supposed to be learning from this experience? What is this supposed to be teaching me? Because I don't think life is meant to be um, painful. I do though think that we're supposed to feel like everything's about learning. It's about I learning, agree. Loving and I feel like that's life. Life is about loving and learning. I Every agree. experience is supposed to be teaching us something. I agree. Well, you have taught us so much, and you always do. Can I, can I have you on again with your dad? I'll, I'll ask him if he says if yes. If not, will you do it I'll anyway? Do. Will you do it I'll anyway? I'll do it anyway. I'd love for you to have my dad. I, my dad will talk and have more to say than I will. I mean, I think I think, I, I, think better than I, am, I think it would be adorable yeah. if we can figure this out. I'll ask him. We'll see what he says. Okay, but ask him. I'd love if he did that. If my dad did it with me, that would be golden. I'd love it. <laughs> Thank you for helping all of us and sharing Thank your knowledge. You. And I'm sending you, yeah, mwah, you mwah, mwah, big hugs and, and kisses. And let's talk really soon. All right, we will talk and soon. And say hi I to your promise. wife and, and I will, I hugs and kisses. Okay, all thanks. Right. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody, that's it for tonight. And uh, just go to char.net. If you want to find out more about what's going on with me and sign up for my free new, my free newsletter, it's, it's free. Okay. Anyway, take good care and remember, intuition will take you places logic never could. Bye bye. God bless you.